Okay, I recently came across a huge load of vintage and secondhand fabrics and I thought that I would show them to you because oh, who does not like a fabric haul, really? Let's get into it. Welcome back my lovely ladies and gents. Thank you for tuning into this video today. If we haven't actually met yet, this is your first time here. Welcome. My name is Evelyn Wood and I'm a dressmaker, sewing teacher, and I do a lot of thrifting. And one of the things I like to do is to show you my thrifted items that I get because the show and the tell is the best fun. We all know this. So I've got a huge amount of uh, fabrics that I recently found that uh, I don't know about you but I just can't say no when I find a big stash of vintage and secondhand fabrics that are really good quality and what I need. I like to get them secondhand that when I find them, uh, keep them in my stash because then I have them when I need them. That's how I'm able to sort of uh, not buy new items uh, as much as possible. So before I show you these, let me... Uh, tell you about where I found them because often I get asked like where do you find all these vintage fabrics and uh, secondhand things like where do you find this cool stuff right so this all actually came from the one place it was a a, a church was having a garage sale sort of like a fate uh, on the weekend a special little sell the things all they have and all their community members I guess bring in as well to support the church I guess uh, I found the ad in the local classified ads, uh, if you're here in Australia, that's Gumtree. I thought it might be something like your, what's it called, um, Craigslist? Craigslist, I think that's it. I, I think it's, I don't know what that is exactly, but I think it's similar to that sort of thing. So local classifieds ads is where I found the ad for this church garage sale. And I went there and I have been there before. They, they do these sorts of things regularly every few months or so. I've been there before, didn't find anything like this, but this time we all know secondhand shopping. That's the way it goes. Sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you don't. This time I got very lucky. So there were boxes and boxes of uh, fabric and I literally had to dig through them all to find all of the good ones because there was a lot of garbage there, of course. By garbage, I mean polyester. And so I sort of scooped them all up, took all the ones that I liked, then go through them all and sort out how much I can get, do a deal with them for buying in bulk, of course, and this is what I've ended up with. Okay, let's start with this one. First one is not actually fabric so much as it is tablecloths. Yeah, so this is one little tip is, this is a beautiful light linen. It is so nice. The color is quite nice. I always look for like those beautiful natural fabrics wherever possible. These two even, they have some rickrack around the edges. It's probably going to come off, but uh, always have a look at, at tablecloths and things like that because the fabrics can be divine beautiful natural fibers and there's more than enough to make garments uh, from them so I bought the two of those tiny little bit of lining that was there I think it's just an acetate but I like to have little bits that I don't have to buy new when I need it so this here is a vintage watermark uh, fabric so I'm not sure that it's silk I'm pretty sure it's polyester maybe acetate not quite sure but it is so good so it's like probably from the 60s it's got that wood grain that watermark uh, sheen through and I'm not sure how well it will show up on the camera well, I first came across this fabric when I was in high school uh, looking at my local fabric store of course it was horrible polyester it was this green but it had this like watermark through it and I was fascinated with it I'm so lucky to have some real authentic 1960s version of this so it's really synthetic but I just couldn't help myself about a meter here of some gorgeous red probably I think a cotton linen blend this one the red is just divine so I like these little bits that it's not enough for a whole garment but maybe some collars or cuffs or some trims look at this so there's quite a, a number of meters here. This is a beautiful vintage, probably, probably from, from, from the 40s. Uh, it's a, a, a crepe. I would say it's likely a rayon crepe, uh, just from the handle of it. It is just beautiful. It's beautiful. Oh, look at this. But then I found this there as well. 
Look at the perfect match. I have fucking outfits sitting right here with these two color combos. I love it when this happens. So this one here, I'm not sure what it is, but there is quite a lot of it. It is probably a, it's nice and soft and drapey. My guess is some kind of cotton wool poly blend of some kind, but it is divine. The color, this mustard, I love. There's heaps of it here. It's always so good when you find matching outfits already. And then all of these, which are beautiful vintage fabrics as well. So something I got asked recently uh, on an interview I did with the uh, Love to Sew podcast is they asked, how can you tell the difference between modern and vintage fabrics? And I found it really hard to answer because my answer was really just like, you, you touch it and you look at it and you feel it and you just know. Uh, let me try to describe to you how I know, or just by looking and then feeling these, that they're vintage fabrics. Mostly by the look and the, the feel. Uh, so something like any of these really, like if you go to a fabric store today, these will not feel like this. You can tell that these are natural fibers or perhaps a rayon as well. But nowadays these would be made from polyester and they would have a completely different look and feel. They definitely, fabrics, not all of them, but generally are quite lighter these days due to polyester and the way they feel. A lot of vintage fabrics I find have so much more weight to them. For instance, this one here is really quite weighty, um, whereas a modern one would be quite, probably quite light. I can feel by, by this, the creases it gets, that it's either natural um, or rayon. These ones in particular, these silk ones, uh, crease rather than polyester. And you can just like, it's just unlike any other fabric that you would normally see. It's just got this different quality to it. Things like this white, it's, it's not even see-through very much at all. Like it's made really well. So there's about two and a half meters here of this um, white. I think it's a silk, so it feels divine. Might use it as a lining, maybe an outer, I'm not sure, but there's quite a bit there. Blue chiffon, again, these are, I think, from the 1940s. They have actually labeled them as 1940s, and I think they're correct. A meter and a half of this one. It's a little stain here or there, but I think I can work my magic. So there's only a tiny bit of this white one here, but this pattern on this is just divine. Imagine this as a collar or cuffs or something like that, added to a, just a thrifted uh, 90s garment, for example, will make it look really vintage because you've got that real vintage fabric that you just don't see things like this with this weight and the feel of it, that will be perfect. So even though it was just a tiny little amount, I definitely get that. I mean, it was $2. A little bit of silk organza. This is divine. Again, the feel of this is just unlike any organza that I see in the shops, at least anyway. Uh, you crush it and it's actually creasing. This is going to be fabulous in my stash. And again, some more 1940s uh, chiffon. I have no idea what I would make out of this yet, at least, but it's definitely going into my stash, this beautiful vintage piece. I know all those uh, colors look horrible on camera. So here are some ones that you can actually see probably a little bit better. This is just a tiny bit, again, this lovely check. Uh, I believe it's, I know, it's a really good quality wool. I just like, you just feel this. Oh, it's so good. So there's not a lot, but again, this might serve as some contrast um, pieces, cuffs, collars, you know, that sort of thing. Again, it's just beautiful to have these beautiful quality fabrics for those little pieces, even nice as well. And this one I'm just in love with. So there's a fair bit here, uh, three meters by, yes, vintage width that's only 90 centimeters wide, so it's quite narrow. Look at this. I know, right? It's just like my perfect colors. The navy, the red, the black blue, it is just perfect and it feels divine. It is so nice to touch and oh, it's just a glorious fabric. I cannot wait. I might make actually maybe a pinafore or something similar to what I'm wearing at the moment. I think that could quite look quite cute with this one. I don't know, what do you think? You tell me your thoughts, what you might do with uh, this gorgeous tartan fabric. 
in the same realm. I also recently, not at the same place, but have these little um, buckles. They're just clear ones, but I quite like to have them in my stash because you can make a, you know, fabric covered belt, even if it's got a clear buckle, gives it a really, really vintage look to just say, you know, thrifted items. Just it's those little touches that, that really add to the vintage look. So I always pick up those sorts of things. And one last item that I have has nothing to do with fabric, but I picked up this vintage hat somewhere along the lines and of course, like, probably needs a bit of re-steaming, reshaping through here, but I'm not going to leave this behind. It is proper wool, so I can re-steam it. It actually fits on my head, like all the way down. I think I have a big head and not many hats do that, so. Show and tell is so much fun. Uh, it is the best part, I think, is come home and like go through everything. Now I have to actually uh, wash all of these vintage fabrics because they're old. They've been sitting around for a very long time and they need pre-washing before I do anything with them. Or even if they go into, before they go into my stash, they're going to get pre-washed. So, uh, wish me luck. Let me know which was your very favorite fabric below. I always like to know uh, which is yours, which you wouldn't have left behind. It's always so much fun. Thank you very much for watching. Like this video if you liked it and hit that subs subscribe button if you haven't already because I do lots of these kinds of videos and if you want to see what I maybe eventually turn these into, we do lots of sewing on here as well, of course. Thank you so very much for watching. Until next time, bye. So I think you'll find this amusing. This one is labelled as winter weight, which is true where I live. This is definitely a winter weight. It's wool, it's really thin, it's nice and light, it's perfect for winter. Whereas anywhere that has an actual real winter, this is called a tropical weight wool. <laughs> I find that very amusing. Like, I can see through it. It's sheer when you hold it up to the light still. It's perfect, perfect for... A tropical <laughs> winter wait.